South Carolina and what you see on film from, from their defense? Very good football team. Um, I mean, they sort of remind you of Ole Miss a lot with the big defensive end, very good defensive line. You know, everyone knows about uh, uh, Norwood. You know, he's their explosive playmaker on defense. But, I mean, if you look at their defensive ends, they're probably just as big, if not bigger, than Ole Misses. They have a guy who's 6'8", 280. So it's, you know, one of those types of games where it's going to be, you know, trying to, trying to hit him in the mouth and try to, you know, do the old coach save and saying, you know, sort of dominate the line of scrimmage. And then from there, work your, you know, your scheme. They have a very young secondary, which is, um, you know, a good thing. But at the same time, it also shows that those guys are great athletes if they beat out older people. So, you know, oh, I mean, South Carolina's have a tremendous defense, and it's just, um, you know, how do you execute and how do you prepare and how do you play the game? And, you know, we're looking forward to being able to do that on Saturday. We know how you've done as a receiver, but from a blocking standpoint, how would you kind of rate where you're at in that part? Well, I think I've been doing, uh, I mean, at least with myself, a good job. It's been tough this last week just because, excuse me, um, I did this okay finger and I, I like to grab, you know, that that's a big thing with, you know, Office alignment or, or any pe people like to block. If you block with your hands, you you have a better job of driving someone off the ball and sustaining a block. You know that's been something that you sort of just have to learn how to play with. It's something that I think all you know football players in general have to you know, deal with injuries, nicks, and how to sort of change your style of play. But you know I've been proud of the way I've been blocking. You know um, the way I see it is you have to prove yourself as a blocker in order to get passes thrown your way. So as long as you just keep grinding out and blocking hard, and you know especially with um, you know, the attention Mark Ingram and our running backs get, I think that's also a testament to their O-line, as well as the tight ends who are within the mix of blocking. So in, in that instance, you know, I, th I think I'm proud to be a part of that. I think they have a tight end from Bowles, don't they? Yeah, they do. He was my backup when I was there. He's uh, I'm best friends with his family. Uh, his name is Mikey Triglia. He's a very, very good tight end. You know, hopefully he'll get to play. You know, I always like the same Bowles guys play. But, uh, you know, I'm really close with his family. And there's, I think there's a... Another Bulls player there named Bradley Terry. He's a uh, walk-on linebacker, but uh, you know you gotta love it. Bulls players. <laughs> Colin, how do you think the team's dealing with the attention? And, you, know, you guys number two in the country now. Or some people say Alabama might be the best team in the country. What do you think about dealing with? That? You know, the funny thing is, you know, we really don't think about that a lot. It's one of the things that um, it's funny because when I was at Georgia Tech you were sort of like trying to figure out, oh, trying to get back at it, trying to get yourself in the top 25, you know, hopefully get in the top 15. And, and here's one of those things where we really don't worry about the ranking. It's one of those situations where it's if we win all our games, that's what handles the job. And um, I know a lot of people talk a lot about, you know, who's better, Florida or Alabama, or Florida, Alabama, and Texas. But for us, I think it's just – it, it, I think it's just, like I said, a testament of Coach Saban where he really doesn't allow you to think that way. It's, it becomes an aspect of every day is just the same routine. It's can you, you know, stay within the grind of football itself and, and the weekly schedule in order to have a chance to be able to highlight yourself on Saturday. And it, and it becomes where each week is the biggest game. So you can't look beyond that or look at where you're standing at now because if you do, then you lose, you know, track of where you're trying to go towards and you could be number two now but if you lose a game you're number 25 you know in the next week it's just how old miss was number four lost a game and they're 23 the next week so you know everything's dependent upon you winning and i think that's what we understand and our whole thing is i guess the the, the goals that we set up is trying to get back to an sec championship and, and that involves us taking care of these games and i think that's the main focus it's not about our ranking it's just trying to get back there so we can start to achieve the goals that we, you know, we sort of didn't, were able, not able to capitalize upon last year. South Carolina has that hybrid linebacker safety position. Um, is it going to be a little tougher for you to contribute in the passing game when you're you're probably not going to have like a true linebacker on you? You know, I don't. I that's a funny thing. I really don't know. It's uh, it's a like I said, a testament to Coach McWayne. He's formed a tremendous game plan. It's going to be one of those situations where uh, it's always going to be team's always going to try something different against us. And I think that's the biggest thing that's, that's happened this entire year is you come into a game with a game plan, and teams are always going to break their tendencies against Alabama. They're going to try to stop a run by bringing tons of people in the box. They think that they can frustrate Greg McElroy by trying different coverages. So you really have to be prepared for just about anything thrown your way. And about, I'd say by the end of the first quarter, we sort of understand of what a team's trying to do. And I think that allows other players 
I myself or Julio or Mays or anyone, you know, even our running backs out of the backfield, being able to figure out where the weak spots are and the holes are going to be in that defense. Um, you know, like I said, with that, that type of hybrid player that they do have, um, you know, you, you just see him as another player on the field. You really don't think about his type of skills because you have to worry about how you're going to play. And, and, you know, each team in SEC is going to have tremendous players uh, athletically and, and uh, mentally. They're probably the toughest players, you know, I, I believe in the country. And uh, it's just how do, you, how, do you, how do you carry your game plan out and just executing? I think uh, in the end, if that's what we do, we'll be able to come out with a victory. Um, a couple in Alabama recently named one of their sons Saban after Coach. What's your reaction to that? Uh, I mean, I guess Coach. I mean, Coach Saban's ridic ridiculously. Um, I guess it, it's funny because when I came here, you know, I really didn't have a stand for Alabama. You know, I, I've really never been to Alabama. Um, you know, I knew my grandfather player, but it wasn't like I went to Alabama games. When I first got here, you see just the enthusiasm that the, that the people have for this. The city, this team, this this state—it's uh, something that they, I think, hold on a pedestal, and and that way, I think um, it, it's an awesome thing. Uh, I don't know how Coach Saban's taken. I'm sure he probably loves it, but at the same time, it's uh, I guess it's a free country, so you can name your son. But or it was a, I'm guessing a son, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to say you don't want to name your daughter's name, but uh, I'm sure that he loves it. It's one of those things where uh, you know, if you're a big fan, it's it, I'm sure back home in Florida, you know when. Gators doing great. People were naming their son Spurrier or something like that. So it's one of those things where uh, I'm mean, good for them, I guess. <laughs> Growing up in Florida, are you kind of excited to be playing Spurrier? You know, it's play. funny. I mean, it's just one of those things. My dad and Coach Spur are actually very good friends. So in that instance, it's um, one of those things where I really haven't thought about it until just right now when I said that. Because growing up my entire life, is, you know, I saw Steve Spurrier as head coach of Florida. And it's kind of funny that he's head coach of South Carolina. But uh, you know, I'm, just, I'm just looking forward to playing. You know, once you miss a year, you're just fortunate for every game that you get. So for me, it's just another game. It's another opportunity to hopefully go out there and try to prove yourself as one of the best tight ends in the nation and prove ourselves as hopefully the best team in the country. You said your dad's a pretty big Florida guy. Well, my whole family went to Florida. You know, it's funny because all I do is get texts from Florida people just, you know, trying to be like, hopefully we'll see you in the SEC championship. And I try to tell people, you know, it's just about a weekly grind. And we try not to look forward to that, you know, too much. You know, that, that, that's something you set your goal for. But at the same time, you just, uh, it's about each game. And right now it's South Carolina. And, you know, there's nothing where it's, you know, it makes it bigger because my dad knows these spurs just. It's one of those things where I guess after the game I'll walk up and say hello. <laughs> <laughs>